Hi guys, it's Rick Shields down here at Quest Golf Academy here at Prairie Sports Village. I'm going to be testing the new TaylorMade P790 irons. I've got the 7, the 4 and the wedge to test it on GC Quad with Real Pro V1s. Now the P790, this golf club has been introduced to fit between the irons they've currently got out on the market. So we've got the M range, which is kind of designed for forgiveness, distance, maybe for the slightly higher handicapper. Then you've got the P range, which they've had the P750 and the 770s out, which are more designed for the better players. And kind of this sits in the middle. It's a hollow head design, but it's been filled. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that. But hollow head designs at the moment seem to be all the rage. You look at like your Callaway Epics, your PXGs, even Titleist are bringing out a hollow head design now as well. So this kind of sits right in that category. But they've actually not branded it as super expensive like maybe the Callaways. So it's a little bit comes in a more reasonable, when I say reasonable, still expensive, but slightly cheaper than the Callaway irons. This is a forged head design. And when I said it's different, because once they've made this golf club, it's actually been filled with what they're calling speed foam. Now I've seen this speed foam and it feels like a squishy mattress, like a little hamster mattress. And what happens, once they've made the head, they squirt this liquid in, expands by four times its size and fills every kind of little nook and cranny within the golf club to give it a different feel and a different sound. Let's give it a hit and see kind of how that actually feels and sounds. As a player's iron, I think it looks really nice. It's got a chunky back, but you don't see that when you set it up behind the ball. It's been very well disguised. Next to, well, there is no offset hardly at all on it. It's a good looking iron. Let's give this a hit. So I'm just going to start with 7 iron. 7 iron sits at the same loft as M1. So it's 30.5 degrees of loft. That felt really good. I put that flag at 190. It might be a little bit ambitious, actually. I'm probably going to carry a loft like this at around 180 at 35. That felt really good. I'm going to reserve my judgment, but that felt really good from the first strike. It has got a speed slot across the bottom, which is helping with a little bit more forgiveness. And the seven iron, and going up in the set, there's a tungsten weight in the toe, which is helping with a little bit of a feel and kind of preventing that twist on sen off centered hits as well, effectively. Actually, I really like that look of the club. It's, it's, a, it's a small iron, but it's not as if it's like scary bladed. Kind of reminds me of like the TP, uh, the RSI TP, or the RSTP when they brought that one out. Kind of has that look about it. It's very boxy and good, good looking shape. It comes out like a rocket. That came out great. Super high considering the loft. I think the spin rate is going to be a little bit low just because of that loft, but I think it's going to match it up back with the height again. That seemed to go up into space, that one. Let's give it another hit. That feels fantastic. I know whether it's the feel, the sound, the whole package involved in it, but I would kind of put that as, and this is a bold statement, I think that's the best tailor-made iron I've ever hit, feel-wise. Like, it feels it's perfect. It feels soft. It's got a good sound to it. It seems to be flying very nicely. I get a lot of response from it. I'm going to hit one more, actually. Tailor-made, certainly the P range, the P770s, P750s, didn't really do it for me this year. I thought they were quite, I don't know, just weren't great. This particular model, with it, with it having that hollow head design and filled, and it being forged, it feels awesome. And it's going so high. I mean, at 190, I've hit the green, stay on. I've hit the green four times there in a row from, from 190 yards out. Honestly, that felt really good. And I honestly, I'm going to say, probably the best feeling tailor-made iron I've ever hit. Felt awesome. Let's move that back to a four iron next. Okay, so moving into four iron next. This is 20.5 degrees of loft. 
Again, there's a little bit more tungsten in the toe to offer that kind of more forgiveness on off-centered hits. Sp speed slot is still present. It just looks fantastic. I think it's a really powerful striking iron. When you look at it, the edges and the, the way that it's been designed look superb as well. It's kind of got that little bit of chrome design around the P790 and this kind of brushed finish. The only thing I actually hate from the look of it is the, the actual way they've written the number. I hate that. It looks kind of the boxy in a bit. I don't know. It's not as soft as it could be. The, even the way it says forged on the, on the neck and even the P790, I actually prefer the, the, the font of the tailor-made. I think that would be an actual nicer font to go on this golf club. But that's only a personal opinion. It's, it's really being quite picky. Let's go four iron from 230 yards out. Just drawn that one a little bit too much. Yeah. It's not a bad hit, don't get me wrong, but it, I could feel it. it was a little bit from the toe and it kind of just drew a little bit to the left. Not actually that terrible, but it did have a little bit more shape on it. 205 carry, came out nice. Still felt good, but I could tell, definitely tell I struck that more toe side of centre. That's a golf shot. That has come out superb. Plenty of height on these golf clubs. It's one thing I've noticed when I'm hitting those, they don't, they actually seem to be coming down with a decent descent angle to get them to stop. And even though the spin will be probably pretty low, it actually feels like they've got a bit of stopping power just from the height that they're coming in from. That one's certainly more than the, uh, the first one. Wow, oh, that was a thin. That was a terrible strike. Oh, let's see what that one's done. Has done. I, I hit that awful. <laughs> it's, it's found the front, but I've got to be honest, that was a dreadful strike. I've got one more with the four. I mean, that's showing a little bit of forgiveness potentially at 205 carry distance. And I really did catch that low on the head. Yeah, again, not my best strike, but it's kind of got to the front edge of the green again. Those last two were a bit scrappy, a little bit off the bottom, I'm afraid, but kind of came down and still almost got to the front edge of the green there at 2.30. So considering they were bad hits, they've actually done well. The, the weird one, that second one that seemed to go to, the, to space, that seemed to go really high, and it did. It, when I hit it, it seemed to go high, and I'm not sure that would be... I'd kind of need to figure out what the, the average height of those were if I was hitting that a bit more. Because I've got three that came out low. The first one came out low because I hit it slightly from the toe. The second one went super high and seemed to strike awesome. It, it came out like, like a six iron. And the last two, because I thinned it, came out really low again. So I'm not sure about the height of those ones. I feel like there was a little bit of inconsistency of the height of the shot, if I'm honest with you. Let's move it back to hitting some wedges. So 45 degree wedge loft. We lose the tungsten from eight, nine pitching wedge and we use, lose the speed slot. So the club gets a little bit smaller and slightly better weight distribution as well within the club head. Even though it's kind of a, a hollow head design and it's been packed with this speed foam, it doesn't look big. It doesn't look overly chunky. They, they really do remind me this set of golf clubs of the, um, what are they called RSI TP? or RSTP or something along those lines. They kind of really remind me of, of the look when I set it up behind the ball there. Much better looking than, in my opinion, than the P770 and the P750. I think this could be a really popular club for a lot of players. Let's hit this at 150. And for a wedge, I'm just after feel consistency and some decent spin. And that certainly had the feel nailed on. Let's see what the initial spin number was. Maybe a little bit low. Come on, Quad, what are you saying? No, no, just under 10,000. Not bad for a wedge. Oh, I was a bit skinny again. See what a bad hit does. Again, it was just a smidgen off the bottom of the golf club. Oh, don't go in. I'm yet to hold one on a test or a simulator shot, and I really didn't want it to be on a thin shot. That's done well, though, considering that was off the bottom. It still managed to carry there at 130. It's a good-looking head design, actually. 
with this wedge. Oh, so high. Every shot, there's been on the seven, the wedge and the, and the uh, four iron, there's been the occasional one where I've seemed to have hit a little bit higher than the rest. Uh, whether that's just because I've struck it slightly better and the other one's slightly from the bottom, but they've actually come out surprisingly high. And that's what's probably going to get the stopping power more than the spin on these irons. Let's have a quick look. I think the spin rate's going to be low, but I think what we're going to lose with that, we'll see in difference in height. So we look at the seven iron. On average from the four shots I hit there, I hit them nicely, I hit them well. Feel-wise, I cannot question it. They were unbelievable feel. Probably, honestly, the best feeling tailor-made iron I've ever hit. Ever. 181 carry distance, which is good for a seven iron. Strong seven iron, don't forget, it's 30.5. We see spin rate just under 6,000 at 5,600, which is low, it is, but the height seems super high. Peak height, 34 yards up in the air. With my 34 degree iron, I typically get about 36 yards up in the air. So it's a little bit lower in flight than that. Descent angle is coming at 46 degrees on the way down. There's a chance of these still stopping. With some of these low spin clubs, I'm gonna start looking at the height and the descent angle a little bit more. So I think that's where we're going to see the stopping power come from, even when the spin rate is low. We then move back to 4-iron, 202 carry distance. But you saw from the shots I hit there, they were just a little bit, what's the right kind of word? I just didn't particularly hit them great. Two of them I hit dodgy. There was that one, that second shot, which I don't know if it might have just been a misread. Because that's gone way higher than the rest. I mean, that's gone 46 yards in the air. I'm actually, gonna, I'm actually gonna say that's a misread. I've never done this before on a test. I would almost say quads misread that because I, I can't see how that's gone 46 yards in the air. It went high, but that's super high. So we look at there, uh, I would say that's more average distances. 201 carry distance there for the four iron. Height there at 23, but they're all a little bit thin for 23 height. And I think normally if I had struck that well, I'd probably get nearer to 30 yards up in the air of height. Spin rate was at 4,000 on average there with the four iron, which is pretty good. The pitching wedge. Um, carry distance there at 132 for the 45 degree wedge, which is good, I'm happy with that. Just under 10,000 spin at 9,300. So it's like, they're actually, it's actually hitting the, the box quite nicely. I don't, I don't see it being the longest golf club that you're gonna buy because you've got the M2 for that. The M2 goes long, the M1 goes long. I feel like this set, the tailor made have missed this set, or certainly a club in this category, because a golf, an all round golf club, I don't feel like they've catered for it this particular year. M1 is probably the closest to an all round golf club, but really, this is what they missed. I don't know if it does sit in the P family. I feel like it, it's almost its own category. It's not really an M iron, it's not really a P iron. This should sit in its own category. Think of another letter in the alphabet, and it kind of should sit there, almost an A. A club, an all-rounder, because it's got more variety for all different players. I can see golf pros playing these. I could play with these irons, and I could also see a higher handicapper, probably up to 20-odd handicapper playing with these, because there's a level of forgiveness and size and mass of this golf club. The feel, and I've said this a couple of times through this review, there has never been a tailor-made golf club for me that's felt that good, ever. I'm glad because they made some bad feeling golf clubs this year. But that seems to hit the spot really nicely. The P790, that is a, a solid, solid club. I think that's gonna really compete with the Epic Iron, PHG Irons, the Taylor Titleist Irons in that kind of hollow head category because it's got the feel as well. Guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you have, click that thumbs up button. Comment below what do you think of this golf club as a look and are you going to get a chance to test it? So that'd be really interesting to hear your feedback too. Subscribe to the channel if you're brand new. You can do that by clicking the big red button. It's free to do, and it keeps you connected with all of my content. TaylorMade P790 irons. Best feeling TaylorMade iron I have ever hit. That's saying something. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.